For every artist, there is that one moment in their life, the spark that sets the fire for what they want to do for the rest of their life. For me, that was listening to the first album uh, that I ever got to hear of Tony Rice play guitar. That really got me fired up and ready to play you know, guitar the rest of my life. So you guys can imagine how special this is to me right now. I'm being able to hold a guitar that was owned by my hero and played for many years. So what we decided to do is get it to the guy who knew more about the origins of Tony Rice's personal Santa Cruz guitar. at the 2024 NAM, and we're about to go in to the Santa Cruz guitar booth because I'm gonna meet up with Richard Hoover. I've got a very special guitar in here. One of our customers brought this to me. This is Tony Rice's personal guitar that he had built. This is the guitar that is on most of all the advertising promos for the string packages, the uh, DVD, uh, homespun video, lots of things have this, and also recorded on quite a few guitars, including John Carlini recorded this on the Two River Suites. But what I'm really excited about is showing this to Richard, letting him see what happens, and I can't wait to see what kind of stories he's got to talk about building of this guitar. Richard, I got something special to show you. Okay. This is something that I'm pretty excited about. This came in to me from a customer. This should be a friend of yours that you have seen. Here's back. And I want to see your thoughts on it. But this is Tony's. I I recognize the woods. Yes, I bet you do. Uh, I recognize that overlay. Um, let me see the serial number. That's what I thought, yeah. yeah. This is a 262. Two, I have this, this one. beautiful fade. It, the top looks like, you said it was tortured? I don't know what was done to it. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Tony's though. He's, right. This is the one he had for a long, I guess he called this one brownie is what he was t they oh, told really? me because yeah. of the wood that he uh -huh. picked out in this one. Yeah. So do you remember building this one? Of course. <laughs> yeah, it's not like we made tons of, I, what did we make, maybe eight or nine guitars? over uh, uh, almost 30 years. Well, what's cool I have with this is a copy of your original build sheet. Oh, that's very cool. So yes, a couple things I wanted to check with you about. There's some really cool stuff. You've got exact measurements of the neck thickness that he wanted. That's right, yeah. Okay, then it says, uh, of course, you know, overlay material Brazilian, V-neck, pronounced ridge and yeah again you have that scale right but here's the one I was curious about Brazilian chosen right all right so tell me what was the choice do you remember the choosing this one what was it made that Tony decided this or was it you that decided on this particular set uh, you know first we picked it tonally because it would match his style of playing and secondly he would have okayed and approved a photo of it you know that it was right for him and I love this, these sides. The sides are gorgeous. It just looks like a, uh, you open the dictionary to Brazilian rosewood and there's that <laughs> photograph. That's very, very right. Yeah. So yeah. again, has all the standard stuff that you would expect right in here. Again, right. Um, saddle compensated. Uh, what is this you hear on this uh, 316's TR base? Um, Here this uh, the comp that saddle's been replaced. At this some has definitely time. been replaced. Yeah, you can see it's, it's a little short there, and uh, the and the original saddle was compensated, so it actually got kicked back to the B string. It wasn't uh, the ridge wasn't straight across. It would have come up, back, and down again. So it went like that. Really? To get the indication rider. Yeah. Yeah. And the 316 is this measurement, and 
this measurement. Really? Yeah. Uh, Excellent. Of course, German spruce top. Tony right. was very partial to the German spruce tops He's right, of this indeed. era. Yeah. Yeah, what was the year of this, by the way? Do you happen to remember what year uh, roughly it, this it, would have been? Yes. Yeah, Looks like it says 1993. Is that possible? That's what that's supposed to be, yeah. 93. So, you know, I have one that's a 1990. Yeah. And this would have been like the beginning of the pro, right? That's about the time, yeah. Because we, although we made this guitar forever, we didn't call it the pro till around this time. Gotcha. So yeah, we got a German chosen again. Did you choose this particular top? I would have he... chosen that, yeah. Okay. And I would have chosen, um, you know, our specialty is working with uh, the player and uh, we really can control anything you'd have on your sound system as far as knobs or sliders or personal choices. So EQ of the guitar, the level of clarity, the tone, uh, the presence whether it's meant to really focus and project or be open and airy. And part of that is choosing the right piece of wood for this guitar. Not the best wood for all guitars, but the best wood for that guitar. And you know, Tony's style was, um, uh, the reason he came to us is his cherished old herringbone was pretty tubby, you know? And he had to move back really close to the bridge to get clarity. So. This one we wanted to have, without going extra effort, have more of an even EQ. The bass is powerful, but it's got more substance than the great trouble. So I chose this this top for its um, excellent. It's like not complicated. It's just it's many things. It's like stiffness this way, this way, this way. Really? Yeah. The weight tap tone, and we. Since that time, we've, got, we've been able to put that in a scientific vocabulary and develop the mechanisms to measure it. So instead of, it's really hard to teach. Instead of me going, do you feel this? Do you hear this? We can dial it in. Yeah. And it would be great to take some of these because our science can also reverse engineer. Take a guitar like this and find out its properties and repeat it. Very, very cool. I saw one more thing that I, uh, I saw on that build sheet. Yeah. Which said, Pickguard C. Richard. Yeah. So was this the first time you used this Palomino I, style maybe guard? Maybe so, yeah. Yeah, we, it's, Palomino's a great name. We call it Dalmatian, but Dalmatian, I actually yeah. prefer Palomino. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, that's Dalmatian, nice, Palomino. Nice cowboy, yeah. And, uh, um, you know, we've done different styles of tortoise shell. In fact, one guitar had a real tortoise shell on it. And this was, this is really nice in keeping with the look of an old guitar. It's funny, real tortoise shell looks way more fake. Yeah. Than, yeah that's, uh, Especially that's, his does. Yeah. Um, so this, this was your choice again, or was this a, you guys it talked was, to this one? Yeah, it's something that I would have talked to him about, and we would have agreed that's the best choice for this. Okay. And then the last thing I see on there, obviously yeah. we got string action, talked about that. Yeah. Tuners, these are really unique gold wave release. If you look, yeah. they're very engraved and very right. unique. Um, did you guys do many of these Tony Pros in this kind of? Well, for uh, Sumac had a standard engraved. I almost remember this guy's name. I'm gonna say maybe Ron Fancy that hand engraved these. And uh, he could have been a, a friend of Stuart McDonald, or he could have been somebody that Snuffy Smith knew. And Snuffy was the guy that looked at but it was hand done. It's really pretty. Sure. So now we get stuff off of the build sheet. Yeah. I'm seeing he had this sanded down and and uh, yeah. you know beat yeah. up. Was that you or was that done outside of the shop? To be you know to be as accurate as possible on this guitar, I don't know. Uh, we did this for him. It's like the violin idea, yeah. right? This is um, uh, uh, has no finish on it. And it's actually faster than a slick neck, yeah. which is sticky. And uh, Wyatt actually did a retro thing on at least one of them. So this could be Wyatt's fault. It could be. <laughs> so I saw that. Um, yeah, by the way, you know I have a 1990 Tony yeah. Price standard model. Thank you. 
very, very similar neck profile. I mean, yeah. that's the one thing I, I really was amazed at was I've never played any like mine uh, before until this came in the shop, and I'm like, boy, this is almost identical. Now, again, mine came out in 1990, January of 90. Uh, very similar finish, but, uh, you know, obviously a little bit different. So that's why I'm curious about that. I know one other thing, it came with a receipt, and I've got it back at the shop, but he did have a new saddle built, but he also had these even more recessed than your original. Uh, I was, I noticed that, and I was thinking, I wonder what that's about, because he really liked to rest his hand there, and he really had his bridge pins as flush as possible on it. And uh, that's really interesting. So I have a, a repair receipt from somebody in North Carolina, and these guitars already had a recessed pin in it. Yeah, yes. oh, okay. You, good, you guys good, already good. did that, right? Yeah. But this was even further, he had it even more recessed. And if you look, that E string's practically yeah. touching right in there. It's really, really close. Yeah, I know he, he had John Carlini do work for him also, but I don't know that history on this one. So, yeah, so speaking of Carlini, um, I checked on some of the stuff, reports of Tony saying what he had recorded with it. The oh, Two that's River great. Suites with Carlini. Carlini played this on most of that album. There's a letter in the, with this that says, you know, some of the albums that he did record with. So I do have a great. copy of a letter that's from great. Tony when he did um, sell that's his That's a guitar. great piece of history because yeah. Tony told me that I had written it down, the, you know, what he recorded with Old Bone and what he recorded with uh, his Santa Cruz and it's lost to history. So I like that bit of Okay, it. I was really impressed with this guitar. It's a really cool piece. I was really curious to see how much of it you remembered. Um, but I as far as I can tell, this was the one that he used probably more than any of them as far as recordings from what he reported on this letter and said he had done. There's a lot of recordings done with this particular guitar. So uh, he must have really, really loved this one. I know you guys did quite a few different ones uh, uh -huh. throughout yeah. the years. And but. most of it, it wasn't so much changing for sound, it was changing for ergonomics, so it was easier. Uh, in fact, going down to the 25 point scale, because the shorter the string length, the less tension it takes to turn it up to pitch. And so he's really trying to preserve his, you know, his rig. Uh, I do remember that this top came from a family, I'm in the second generation now, of uh, the Kolitz in Germany. Uh, that became good friends with that. And this uh, Brazilian is from a tree that was, that was probably 450 years old. It was cut about 100 years ago before chainsaws. So people used a two-person saw and they were standing up. So the remainder of the tree trunk was still there. And it's like beautiful old stuff. Really it is really beautiful. Very, very cool. Well, I will tell you this. And I won't be able to quote this exactly, and I'll try to re-record it when we well, after we film this. But I will say, the last sentence in that letter that he had said, the reason I am selling this guitar is because me, and he called you Dick Hoover yeah. in that particular one. He I said, cured him finally. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said that we have been uh, in the pursuit of the most perfect dreadnought guitar, and up until this point, we had really achieved some amazing things with this guitar, but there was a next step that was coming in. And yeah. that's what he had moved to. That's and that's really what he said, and I thought it was a beautiful thing to talk about how that you and him had worked through, I think he said four or five different iterations that's, of by this guitar. Time, yeah, that'd be true. Um, and I think that was a really, really beautiful thing to hear. And again, I just wanted you to see this uh, build sheet because I, I thought this it. was super cool. Uh, I love that you got, gave me an opportunity to sit down with you for a minute, talk about this really special guitar. I know the owner also finds it to be very, very special. It is a very special sounding guitar. Um, yeah, and it's my uh, hero. And, and this then, is a Tony signature too. Yeah, what? So no. did he ever tell you why, of all places, to put a, a strap button? It's unique to him. You won't see that uh, anywhere else. No, everybody I, wants to wrap it around. If the I horn. saw just that, I go, I think that's one of Tony's guitars. <laughs> yeah. It, there's, you know, it's illogical, but that think, was what he liked. Do you think it had to do with the fact that the old 30, or 35 actually had it that way? It could be, because one of the things he told us is he wanted. You know, he wanted a new custom sound, but he didn't want to look at the guitar and see a lot of difference, right? So these proportions of the binding and everything, yeah, he wanted to feel that it was the same. And uh, that could have well been what it was. There, there, big fella. Man, you're a good pal. Thanks for that. Thank you so much.
it looks in nice shape. Yeah, like I said, the reports show him he used this quite a bit. This was on the Diapisto string uh, ad. This is the guitar that was on right. there. It's on the homespun video. Right. You know what's delicious is there's people that argue to the depth they never reported with anything but his own herring bone. Well, what's it, funny it, is it, it, in it, the letter that he wrote to uh -huh. the next owner, yeah. he said, I will not tell which cuts on the Bluegrass album were done with this guitar and which were done. And I defy, it says this in the letter, I defy anybody to tell me which one was used That's with the Tony beautiful. Rice. That's a Pro. testimonial, isn't it? I thought that was pretty um, amazing. Again, Richard, I appreciate all your time. Thank you for going through all this stuff with me. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. There you have it guys, a very, very special guitar. I'm, uh, I do want to thank Michael for loaning us this, this guitar in order to document and also to play it. Um, and also uh, Richard Hoover, Santa Cruz Guitars, for donating his time and his knowledge to us. Uh, what, a, what a cool dude. And seriously guys, how cool is it to be able to hold on to such a cool piece of history uh, lots of notes here inside this guitar. It may not be the antique, but to me, this is almost as special. And uh, I want to thank everybody, uh, including you guys, for watching. If you guys like this, check out this next video, which should have a link down below. This is the beginning of our uh, blind test videos, and uh, also a very fun one because it does all the Tony Rice clone style guitars out there, well, that we could get a hold of at the time. And we played them all back to back. Super fun video. Uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. Until then, please hit that subscribe and like button, and we'd appreciate it. We'll see you guys. Thank you.